Thank you, Scott. Good morning, Hobnob. As Scott mentioned, I have the pleasure of introducing today's first speakers. Uh, our first speaker of the day, Commissioner of Agriculture and Commerce, Andy Gibson. Andy Gibson serves as Mississippi's eighth Commissioner of Agriculture and Commerce. He was appointed to the position in March 2018 and won the election to a full four-year term in 2019. As Commissioner, Gibson successfully launched Genuine Mississippi, the Agriculture Workforce Development Initiative, the County Correspondence Program, and the Wild Hog Control Program. He also created an office to promote and expand forestry and timber markets. Prior to serving as Commissioner, Gibson served District 77, Simpson, and Rankin Counties in the Mississippi House of Representatives for 10 years. Gibson chaired the House Judiciary B Committee and the Ethics Committee. Gibson served as treasurer for the Mississippi Legislative Conservation Coalition and the Mississippi House Republican Conference. Gibson received a Bachelor's of Arts in Political Science from Mississippi College and a Juris Doctorate from Mississippi College School of Law. He has been a private law practice since 2002 he is also an ordained Baptist minister. Please help me welcome our Commissioner of Agriculture and Commerce, Andy Gibson. Well, thank you so much. Isn't that some good music? Let's get them a hand right now. All right, thank y'all. Well, I'm Andy Gibson, and it is so great to be back here at MEC's Hobnob, one of my favorite events I look forward to every year. And how about being back here in a brand new, renovated Mississippi Coliseum? Do y'all like what you see today? All right. Because we never did quit. When COVID-19 came in March of 2020, we never quit. We didn't, we didn't stop, and we didn't shut down the Mississippi State Fair. The Dixie National Rodeo didn't quit. We had it, had a great year. Even during the 100-year ice storm, we kept going. And as you know, the old trademark's gone. The new trademark is here. We've got great parking out front, brand new renovated Coliseum. Thanks all to our Mississippi legislature, my friends there. And uh, I'm really excited to tell you that by the end of this year, we're gonna have our own fresh, abundant supply of pure drinking water 750 feet down below my boots right now, all right? The well is going to be done. As a matter of fact, we're going to connect it and it will supply water to all the facilities here on the fairgrounds for all of our events with a generator, no matter what. We're going to have fresh water. You got to have water to survive. And I appreciate everyone's efforts to make these improvements happen. Our staff, Director Michael Lassiter has done a great job. We never quit. We never shut down. The Department of Agriculture and Commerce never quit because our farmers never quit. Can we give our farmers a hand right now? Thank them for what they do. They've been working during this entire pandemic to make sure we have the food and the fiber and the shelter that we need to not only survive, but to thrive. You shut down agriculture, you shut down the dinner table. You got to have food and our farmers never quit. We never shut down anything in the agriculture world. And we're proud of that in the lumber timber world we're proud of that because if we shut down the economy of Mississippi shuts down it is not an exaggeration to say that Mississippi agriculture is the engine that drives Mississippi's economy the number one employer is Mississippi agriculture the number one industry is Mississippi agriculture so we got to keep going no matter what seed feed fertilizer logging food processors grocery stores we all know they're essential and we've got to have them and those who are working for their livelihoods and for you and for me. And as a result, Mississippians have done what's necessary and will be necessary not only to survive but to thrive even in this environment. Last May, when the pandemic was still new, we took some very swift action to make sure we kept commerce flowing in this state. I announced some steps to make Mississippi's food supply more resilient. I announced some steps to make sure that we had more custom slaughter ability for our folks who are raising their own beef and pork. And we announced MississippiFarmMarketplace.com to, to connect consumers with farmers in a way that they could buy direct from the farm. And last year, we announced the expansion of our meat supply in the state of Mississippi. 
Uh, we provided guidance to farmers markets across the state so they could stay open like our farmers market did safely. We turned outside and kept farmers markets running so people, if they couldn't find what they needed at the grocery store, they could find it at the farmers market. We invited existing meat processors in Mississippi to submit uh, proposals to expand their processing to include USDA processing. And I'm really pleased to announce that with a $3.1 million investment that we will not only double but nearly triple Mississippi's local meat processing through existing processors located throughout Mississippi. I'm proud of that. Expanded processing is a win-win. It's a win for consumers. It's a win for our livestock producers. And it's another step toward increasing access to local food. That's what Genuine Mississippi's program is all about. We want to make sure we've got everything we need, local food, fiber, and shelter for the coming days. And meanwhile, you can contrast that with how the federal government has responded. We are dealing right now with a coming crisis in American commerce. I am not only the Agriculture Commissioner, but the Commerce Commissioner, and I want to tell you, as I wrote last week, there is a coming crisis. We've seen inflation like we've not seen in 30 years, and effectively a tax on everyone. We've seen shortages in labor supplies like this country has never seen. It's more profitable for people to sit home and draw a check than to do an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Americans have got to get back to work, but there's a coming crisis if we don't. We can't stop. For long-haul truckers, for example, they wrote the White House. The, not, not only these issues, the, the worker shortages, the labor shortages, the supply chain disruptions, can't unload ports, and to add insult to injury, inflation. But now the federal government is mandating private industry around this country and in Mississippi to fire their workers, the workers that have been working all during this pandemic, to terminate their employment if they don't take a medical procedure. That's as un-American as anything I've ever seen in my life. And it's illegal and it's wrong. And it's going to bring a disaster on this country. Ingalls Shipbuilding, large numbers of employers. Who's going to build our ships when they are sent to the House? Our universities, colleges, the College Board voted 6-3 to three this week to terminate folks who've been working the whole time. A half a million people have already had this virus and recovered from it, and we're going to send them to the House because they won't do what an executive branch illegal mandate requires. I'm not anti-vaccine. I'm anti-mandate, and I believe most Mississippians are, too. The time is to speak up. If we don't speak up now, nobody else will. I'm calling on the Mississippi legislature to do something about this, to take a stand and to preserve our freedoms. That's why last week I signed this order right here, the commissioner's order. We don't have mandates in the Mississippi Department of Agriculture and Commerce. Our folks are going to work. We don't, we, we don't want to know. It's a private, personal decision what medical procedures they had. Keep people working and make sure we don't have these job-killing, economy-destroying policies like this federal vaccine mandate. Speaking of legislators, many of whom are here today, I want to thank you for your leadership. I want to thank you for listening to the concerns that I expressed about that medical marijuana legislation. Now, I didn't ask to be included in the bill. It was someone's idea to include me in a very big way in that bill. And as a result, I've had to get involved. And I appreciate the governor. I appreciate the lieutenant governor. I appreciate the speaker and those who are involved in writing this bill to correct the issue that I talked about. And by putting the licensing back under the Department of Health, because after all, the people of Mississippi voted for a medical marijuana program, not an agricultural, recreational marijuana program. I appreciate that, but it's not the end of the issue. Because when it comes to the way the bill's worded now, uh, there is a role the health department would delegate to the Department of Agriculture enforcement. And that's what I want to take just a couple of minutes to show you this morning. As I talk to states around the country, enforcement is a huge issue. It's going to take a lot of people. It's going to cost a lot of money. I am ready, willing, and able to accommodate the legislature's request and do the enforcement subject to their appropriating the necessary resources. Because when I talk to folks around the country, two major problems, illegal diversion of this medical marijuana substance and the rise of an illegal black market. Last week, the sheriffs of Mississippi and the police chiefs held a training in Rankin County, and I had my people there. And we learned a lot about the problems that other states have experienced, and we don't want those problems to come to Mississippi. But since that time, I've probably talked to half of the sheriffs in this state, and I want to show you what they're showing me, not what may happen, but what is happening right now. Look at this.
Central Mississippi, a drug bust happened two weeks ago, just like this. Lots of marijuana was located. It looks pretty normal, doesn't it, until you get up close. What we have here is about 200 pounds of medical marijuana from the great state of California. And it says it's illegal to distribute this anywhere and keep out of reach of children. And it was approved by the California initiative process. And it's dangerous for anybody but qualified patients to use it. And by the way, it's passion fruit brand medical marijuana. I've never heard of such. I wonder what other flavors it comes in. This is not coming to Mississippi. It's already here. And our law enforcement is concerned about it. Look at this. Trick-or-treating is coming up right now. Next week, next Sunday. This is a brownie. I want all the trick-or-treaters to know. Look what you're getting, all right? This is laced with THC. And it's here illegally. It broke California law to get here. It broke federal law to get here. And it broke Mississippi law to get here. But this legislation has me as the sole enforcing agency. And I kind of feel like the Lone Ranger, all right? We need all law enforcement involved. Last thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Last thing I'll show you. On the streets of Mississippi and North Mississippi, a sheriff sent me this. Looks like fruity pebbles, medical marijuana, illegal to distribute. It's here by hundreds and thousands of pounds. It is a major enforcement. And the sheriffs of Mississippi and the police chiefs of this state and the highway patrol and the Department of Public Safety need a role in this enforcement. It's the right thing to do. I'm just about out of time. I want to wrap up with this. I want to encourage our legislature to address these issues, to fight back on these federal vaccine mandates, to make sure we have the necessary enforcement mechanisms. And to tell you this, I am excited to invite you in the new Coliseum, December 5th, the 80th anniversary on Sunday, December 5th, the 80th Sunday of the anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. We're going to have a Standing for American Freedom event right here. There it is. Featuring Lee Greenwood and Travis Tritt. Are y'all excited about that? Because what we're doing is we're going to use this for a benefit of the Friends of Mississippi Veterans and the homes for our veterans. We're going to honor World War II veterans and veterans all across this state and this country. And we're going to use it to benefit them and their nursing their homes as they have a place to go. And I want to invite you because right now, you're the first ones to hear this. You can get your tickets at the Coliseum box office and be here for Standing for American Freedom. And guess what? No vaccine mandates allowed. Thank you all. God bless you. See you all around Hobnob. Great to be here with you today.